Welcome to the 360 Trading View Thinkorswim Basic Order Type Tutorial. What we're going to be covering in this specific tutorial are the various types of orders that you can execute utilizing the Thinkorswim platform. One of the questions I receive most often from both new traders and traders that have been doing this for a decent amount of time is how to most efficiently implement a solid order flow system. Uh, Thinkorswim offers a lot of different types of orders that you can uh, implement into your trade strategy which both allow number one to assist in managing your risk and number two to help automate things for you which uh, when it comes to trading it really 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 can become beneficial uh, particularly from whether it be a psychological perspective meaning uh, I got problems pressing the uh, sell button when I'm trying to stop out of a trade uh, or preventing you from getting a little bit too greedy and 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 uh, not exiting out of a winning trade before it turns into a losing one which I know that a lot of folks uh, probably have dealt with at least one or two times. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the basic order window first and uh, in the next part of this tutorial we'll get more in depth in the different types of orders that exist on the TOS platform. So uh, let's start here and let's take a look at the order entry tools tab which we currently have pulled up and uh, looking at my screen here you can see that we have an options chain being that I primarily trade options and a lot of the 360 trading view members also primarily trade options so that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, for today but what I think it's important that everyone understands is that these types of orders are also applicable and interchangeable with equities as well as options so the first column here in the order entry tab is labeled as the spread what that actually represents in terms of options is whether or not you're purchasing a single contract or you're entering into a complex spread now if we click on this what happens here is it's just showing a single single spread now as I explained before what this essentially means is that when I have single selected I am just purchasing a single long or short call or put simply enough now the next column that we get into is the side which means what side of the trade are you on uh, are we buying or selling so moving on we have the quantity what the quantity represents is how many contracts or in the case of equity shares are we purchasing in this specific order now one interesting thing that we can look at here is a cool little feature that lets us determine the value in either units percentages or dollar amounts so let's cover that really quick if we wanted to just outright purchase a certain number of contracts what we would then do is we would then define the value in units which is the default value for any type of order now let's say for example we have an open position already and we wanted to complement that position by selling calls against it so what this does is this actually connects with the any sort of existing positions that you have in a certain security and allows you to let's say sell calls against to hedge against 50 percent of your uh, equity position in Apple now we can also utilize the dollar amount tool which allows us if we're let's say managing our portfolio uh, from a perspective of capital allocation this lets us determine what we're purchasing or what we're selling based on capital levels or money so as you can see here that says five hundred dollars but for this tutorial we're going to be strictly utilizing the units value for the quantities now the next section here shows us this is the type of this is the symbol that the order is applicable to and following that is the expiration date now what the expiration represents is this is the series when the option itself expires now if you don't know specifically what that means what I would suggest is that you take a look at some of our uh, options trading tutorials to get a better understanding of what a series exp expiration actually is because I won't be getting into detail on that today the next section here is going to be the strike which represents the strike in which we are purchasing and here we have the type of option that we are trading now is it a call or a put the next section after that is our link 
which we'll get to in a minute. And then we have our price. So this tells us how much we're purchasing or selling that specific instrument for. Moving forward, we have the order. Now, what this is, is this is where we determine, this is where the meat and potatoes are, folks. This is where we determine the order type that we're going to be using. Now, before I get into detail on this, what I want to do is I want to finish up the basic order entry window, and we'll come back to this. So the next section here is something called TIF. And for those of you that don't know what that acronym stands for, it means time in force. What that basically means is when will your order execute? So we have two options here. We have day and we have GTC. What GTC stands for is good till canceled. So when you enter an order, and generally the default value is day, when you enter a order with a time in force being day, what that means is that your order will, will fill and will only be open for that trading session. Okay, So once the trading session is over, then that order will automatically be canceled. So if I execute a limit order for, let's say, $2 on my 114 Apple calls, and that order does not fill by the end of the day, then that order will automatically be canceled. Now, Good till canceled means that the order stays open until I either A, manually cancel the order, or until B, the order fills. So when we're talking about the good till canceled order, generally those are orders that we're looking to leave open until they fill. Uh, and the next thing that we're going to look at is the exchange. Now when we're talking about what the exchange is, is this essentially allows you to determine which trading exchange that your order is going to be routed through. Now you may ask yourself, well, why would I need to change the exchange that my order is routed through? In most instances, you really don't. But there are some instances, particularly when you're trading higher and larger lot positions in low liquidity vehicles, you may want to break up your position, your order, into several different exchanges. Now the reason why some traders do this is to essentially quote unquote fly underneath the radar. So if you're looking to buy a large position in a low liquidity option, then some traders would choose to break that order up into smaller orders and then push each one of those smaller orders through a different exchange so as to not artificially impact the price of the security. So what we're going to do in our next two, in our next part of this series is we're going to go back to the order type field and the link field and kind of explain a little bit more in detail as to how those work. So stay tuned.